What's up, Penguins fans? Happy Monday, or I guess, you know, happy late Monday, November 14th. My 25th birthday is in just a couple of hours, at least as of this recording. Um, would have the blinds up, but, you know, it's also at night. If they were, you'd be, you'd be able to see downtown Pittsburgh back there, because, yes, I will be at the game on Tuesday night uh, when the Penguins take on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, we're going to preview that game a little later on for this episode, but for most of this episode, we'll be talking about the game against the Montreal Canadiens. And yes, I do have the Monday night football game um, behind me as well, the Eagles-Commanders game. So um, I don't think it's going to be a description. You'll hopefully be looking at my wonderful face that at least I watch on YouTube. But yes, we'll be discussing the game against Montreal, things I liked, things I did not like, and why I think you will hopefully see a much better performance from the Penguins um, on Tuesday. So all that plus so much more coming up on this episode of the Locked on Penguins podcast. Your Locked on Penguins. Your daily podcast on the Pittsburgh Penguins. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I'm your host, Hunter Hodes. You're going to follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. You can also follow the show's Twitter at LA Orange for Penguins. And of course, thank you all so much for making this your first listen of the, tip of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. It has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. That is Bet Online where the game starts. So let us get into it. And um, if you all ever want to come to Pittsburgh, you know, this Airbnb that you know, my girlfriend and I are staying at, it's literally you right by the People's Gate, basically, at PPG Paints Arena. Like, you, you walk out of a garage, it's right there. It, it is, this is incredible, um, to, to say the least. But, you know, Penguins, they had their two-game losing streak snapped on Saturday night. I watched the rest of that game at the How at the Moon, which is um, about 10 minutes from the arena. Basically, it's a really, you know, it's, it's, it, I, I think it's probably one of my favorite bars. In the city, but that's just my opinion. Um, you know, just a really crazy game, to be honest with you. You know, you know Montreal goes up one nothing really quickly. Penguins answer back for two. Montreal answers. Pittsburgh answers. Montreal, Pittsburgh, Montreal. Then Montreal wins in overtime. Just a very crazy back and forth affair. Both teams, I don't really think, got that good of goaltending. I think the Canadians also outplayed the Penguins for most of this game. Though it's funny I say that because the Penguins easily could have won this game. Brock McGinn gave them the lead with about six minutes left in regulation. You know, with how they played against Toronto the night before, you're thinking, oh, okay, they should be able to, you know, take care of this. I know that was a three-on-three goal, which is something you rarely see during regulation um, before overtime. I mean, that's the first time I think I've seen the Penguins in another opponent in three-on-three in regulation. <sighs> Gotta say, it's the last time I saw it was their 2014 series against Columbus. I think it was game four of that 2014 series. I don't think I've seen that since. It's very rare to see that during a game that that's not in overtime. But there was just all these penalties were called. The officials were just kind of on one for this. And, you know, Jeff Carter fed Brock McGinn for that goal, who is just on a hot streak right now. You're up 4-3. Um, you know, they go back to even strength for a little bit, but then the Canadians get a minute of a power play, and you're thinking, okay, the PK is on a hot streak. They've killed about 20, 19 of 21, 20 of 22 uh, penalties. You know, they've been really getting their, their crap together. And then they go back to some old habits, and they don't clear the net front. And, you know, you see Sean Monaghan get that goal to tie the game with uh, less than five and a half minutes to go in the third period. And it's just like, okay – at least just get the point, see what you can do in a three-on-three. Three. The Penguins, I thought, got a couple of good chances. The fourth getting Malkin kind of just gave the puck away in overtime. And I'm not here to crap on him because I thought he was one of their best players in that game. He's been one of their best players all season. But I thought he kind of just made a little bit of a lazy play in OT, just gave the puck um, away. And I think it was Doc that gave it to Mike Hoffman who finished it off. But, you know, just a really crazy game. You know, if you look at the score effects – you know, Montreal should have won this pretty handily. Um, at 5v5, they had 60% of the shot attempts. They had 64% of the scoring chances, 73% of the high danger uh, chances, 50, about 56% of the expected goals, but only, it was only a 3-2 to two, um, advantage at 5v5 for actual goals. If you go to all situations, um, the Canadians had almost 60% of the shot attempts, 60% of the scoring chances, 68% of the high danger chances, 56% of the expected goals. So, you know, 
all those micro stats tell you, oh, the Canadians should have easily won this game. The Penguins, you know, they were op- they were opportunistic with their chances. Jake Allen, I also don't think had a good night, and you know, they were able to get contributions again from out th- from throughout their lineup. It was it's just you know. It's hard playing three games in four nights, especially on a road back to back. I don't think I know people were obviously upset that they lost the game because oh they didn't hold a lead again. And yes, you know six minutes left in regulation, even on playing on a back to back, you should be able to hold that lead. I think if the Penguins do kill that penalty off um, after Brock McGinn's goal, I do think they win that game. But again, they were obviously gassed coming into that game. They had just beaten the Capitals on Wednesday. They beat the Leafs on Friday. It took basically a, a very great collective team effort to win that game and then just to start the first period i could tell right away i'm like yeah like this this team looks tired but you know they, but they kept fighting you know they, they took the they took the lead numerous times and yeah you know you you, you want to finish those games you, you took the lead twice in the third period i get it you know fans are going to say you should hold those leads i agree you know they Denny malkin made it three two in the third before montreal answered back and then McGinn made it four three before they answered back just about 30 to 40 seconds later you should be able to hold it but you know, that's honky sometimes. The Canadians came in as the more rested team. And you saw that. You know, they outplayed them for most of that game. I think, you know, you can definitely make the argument that the Penguins were very lucky to get a point out of that. But again, I also think you can make the argument that they should have won that game just because they had the lead um, with only a few, with only, you know, with less, I can't, with, less, with basically six minutes left in regulation. So, uh, also, I will say this at the end of the day, five out of six points, especially after a seven game losing streak is very good. They're basically on par with how they were after 15, after, you know, the first 15 games of last season. Remember they were a uh, five and six and four, the Penguins uh, before this loss, they were six and six and four. Um, so they're six and six and five now. Um, so th- again, th- they're literally right on par with where they were last year, but you know, last year you, you'll saw them go on that massive winning streak after they had that record. And I think the Penguins are going to have to do something similar like that or close to it, you know, if they want to get back in the playoff picture. Again, I'm still not panicking. I, I know the schedule is getting tough coming up again after this Toronto game. They go to Minnesota. They go to Winnipeg. They go to Chicago. They have a ton of back-to-backs this season. They have uh, their The team is, I think, top five um, among all teams for some of the most back-to-backs in the league. And, and it really stinks that just all these back-to-backs are coming on the road. You know, Vancouver, Seattle, Toronto, Montreal. You know, that, that, those are just two <clears throat> examples. I, I could give more if you wanted. But, you know, I think that just that plays a role in, you know, part of the league streak as well. You know, Boston, they probably should have won that game. And then, you know, you play in Buffalo the next night. Still probably could have won that game too. But you'll see what I'm doing here, right? These sets of back to max. The second game is always on the road. It's not at home. So <clears throat> I think the Penguins, they've been kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, screwed a little bit with the schedule makers this season but you know I, you know it is obviously going to turn around at some point you know they're not going to play you know 13 of their next 19 um on the road anytime soon they're, they're, they're set up to have a lot of home games in december which i think can really help things so overall performance wise i wasn't obviously like super thrilled about it i'm glad they got the point it stinks that they probably could have won that game especially when they took the lead with only a few minutes left in regulation but am I going to sit here and say this is doom and gloom? No, they went 2-0 and won that on that road trip. I think you all would take that, especially after they just had that seven-game losing streak. I know you all wanted to go 3-0 going into the Toronto game. Trust me, I did too. It looked like it was going to happen. But you know, that, that, that's why the, the games are played. And the Penguins will have a chance to win their third and four games on Tuesday. We'll preview that game coming up a little later on in the show. Coming up with the next segment, I'm going to get into some overall performances that I liked in that Montreal game, who I think could have a big game on Tuesday against Toronto. But before I get to that, BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis for this season. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball to soccer and esports. We've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest, easiest way to get your betting fix. You can head to the website today or use your phone to learn more. That is BetOnline, where the game starts all right i'm back in this episode of the locked on penguins podcast i am your host hunter hodes remember to follow me on twitter at hunter hodes you can also follow the show's twitter at eleanor store penguins and of course thank you all so much for making this your first to listen of the day so getting some player performances who i thought were pretty good in that montreal game 
got to start with the second line again. And I'll specifically point out Jason Zucker and Danny Malkin. They were animals all over the ice. This is the best hockey I think I've ever seen Jason Zucker play. And at this point, I know this might be a bit early. He's starting to become a candidate who could be re-signed after the season. Would he have to take a pay cut? Absolutely. I mean, you're not going to pay him $5.5 million. I mean, you would probably have to take it, you know, something over three, four. Is that a stretch to say? I mean, you know, I don't know if I would do 4.5, but I would do like four something uh, for sure. He's not going to make 5.5 from the Bengals, that's for sure. But with the way he's playing at right now, point per game pace, their best four checker, someone who is just playing his tail off on an every night basis, scoring, you know, playmaking wise, defending. Everything about his game right now is so good. And, you know, this is the player that the Penguins were – you know, thought they were acquiring a few years ago before the injuries happened and his inconsistencies, but, you know, mainly it is the injuries. But the way he is playing right now, it is stupendous. I'm super grateful that they did not trade him over the offseason. This is the version that I told you all you were going to see this season and why I was so high on him coming into this year. He was terrific in that game. And I'll also say the same for Evgeny Malkin. Had another goal. Yes, kind of had a, a lazy, dumb play in overtime where he, he just gave the game away um, to Kirby Donk on the stick, who got it to Mike Hoffman. And I'll get to Tristan Jari in a little bit. But, you know, overall, you know, I thought he was skating with authority, you know, had that goal defending. I thought he was fine, too. You know, he he continues to be an absolute terror this season. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad that he's proving a lot of his detra- uh, his um, detractors wrong. Yeah, so many people wanted to get rid of him over the offseason, say he can't stay healthy. Well, at least right now, knock on wood, and I just did. Of course, he's playing, you know, he's playing great. He's fully healthy. And I think he's showing a lot of people why he deserved to come back and why you didn't need to go out and sign Vince Trocek or something like that. Um, other players who I thought also played well, you know, uh, Brock McGinn, shout out to him. That's goals in three straight games um, at this point. You know, again, trade him while he's high, guys. Um, but no, no, in all seriousness, you know, this is the kind of hockey that we saw from McGinn um, during the first half of the regular season last year. He even spoke about it after the game saying, you know, his start to the season. I mean, he even admitted that he was terrible. <laughs> he, he legitimately said like, yeah, that's not my game. I've been basically lost a bit, but, you know, he says he's been really working hard and trying to find his game again. And, you know, for the last three games, you know, he's earning his paycheck right now. These last three games, that is what the Penguins saw from him to give him $2.75 million for four years. He had that great last year in Carolina. They thought that was going to be the norm. It hasn't for the most part so far. It's come in spurts, and this is one of those spurts. Is he going to regress <clears throat> going forward? Yeah, maybe, probably, I-, I would say. But, you know, I'm going to enjoy the heat wave at this point. He's giving them good offense, and, you know, he's not sinking them, I think, like he was um, during the first, you know, few games of this season. So had that nice goal, great play from him. Jeff Carter, I thought he also had another good game, really nice pass to him again um, <clears throat> on the assist on that three-on-three. I don't really think he's playing super terribly um, ever since he came back from the injury, though, you know, that could change at any point, but still was happy with his performance <clears throat> as well. Chad Riedel, nice job from him stepping in for a couple of games without POJ. It looks like Joseph is going to be back in the lineup on Tuesday against the Maple Leafs. So uh, I'm sure Rubita will come out. Mark Freeman is also sent down to Wilkesbury. So I think that should give you the indication that um, POJ is ready to go. Those are my main players that really stood out to me on a positive influence. Um, I'll probably throw in Marcus Pedersen. I don't really know how I forgot about him. I don't think he's just been the best defenseman on the team this season. I think he's been one of the best overall players. Um, thank God the Penguins did not trade him. That's for sure. But his defending in his own zone is nothing but exquisite. His first pass and the offensive zone is awesome. His puck movement while walking the blue line is awesome. Has that shoot first mentality. He has turned into a completely different player this season. Honestly, I should say, you know, we saw like sports of it during the end of last season before the playoffs. And now you're really seeing it play out in these first 15 to 16 games. You know, this season, you know, he is more than earning his salary. He has been very good for the Penguins uh, thus far. This season, um, from a negative sort of things, <clears throat> I don't know what's going on with the top line. I think Jake Ensel was fine, but Sid's in a funk right now. I mean, he's gonna get himself out of it. It's Sidney Patrick Crosby here, folks. But you know, <clears throat> the puck just seems to, whenever it hits his stick, it's just bouncing off of it for some reason. He's 
not forechecking like he usually is. His, his passes aren't there. He's not shooting enough, enough I don't think. You know, defensively, I think he's fine. I don't think he's making any glaring issues. But you know, the puck is just – it's not finding his stick as much. And he's also and when it does, he's just not making anything happen. So I don't think he's hurt or anything. It's just a little bit of a rut that he's in. And, you know, he goes on these – at some points during each season. So I'm not super concerned. Again, it's Sid. You know, he's going to, he's not going to play like Jesus Christ himself for 82 games. He's going to have little ruts like this. I'm sure he's going to be fine, but you know, he, he definitely did not have a good game against Montreal. Brian Rust, I also think he's not had a, that good of a start to the season. You know, I think he needs to do better, especially just because he got that massive payday from the Penguins during the offseason. He was the first player to actually be signed by Ron Hextall. But, you know, you saw Mike Sullivan demoted him to the fourth line for a few shifts. He's he has not been happy with Russ's performance. I think he's gonna get right. You know, he's usually, of course, you know, very consistent 20 to 25 goal scorer on this team. I don't think you're really seeing a lot of like things aging effect wise, even though he's a bit older at this point, but he's definitely not playing good hockey. I don't know if he's sinking that top line. I don't know if that's fair to say, but he's definitely not making things any easier for Sid to get out of his mini rut. You know, I would still make that change with moving Russ down to play with Malkin and Raquel back up, even though Raquel was playing great with Zucker and Malkin. So I don't really know if Mike Sullivan wants to change that up. And I understand that. I don't, you know, I'm not the coach, obviously. But again, I will say, I do think, you know, it's something that, you know, Russ just has to be better. Um, I'll throw Chris Letang in there. He's been awful for a good chunk of games this season. And, you know, I have no problem admitting it. You all know that. Listen to this show on a daily basis. You all know how I feel about Chris Tang. Uh, you all know how I feel about his detractors. I don't take them seriously. You know, people that say he's had a you know bad career and you know he's just always blamed for the problems. I don't. I don't pay attention to that. I try to stay as, as objective as I can and give my best analysis about him. But I will say this: he's been bad. I don't know. What it is, he does not have the Brian Dumoulin excuse at this point. He is playing with the best defenseman on the team so far this season in Marcus Pedersen. I don't think it's an aging thing. Could it be an injury? Sure, maybe, but I don't know. You know, he 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 needs to wake up if the Penguins have any shot of going anywhere this season, especially you know, especially when it comes to making the playoffs, because you know they're out of the playoff picture, of course, right now. But you know, he needs to be Chris is saying. If they want to do anything, he needs to get back to the way he played last year. Because right now, his offense isn't there. He's not shooting the puck a lot, which is very weird. I mean, it's, it took until game 12 or something for him to finally have his first shot on net during the main advantage. I mean, that, that shouldn't even be possible. He just needs to be more assertive, more aggressive, and just overall just improve his game. Even defensively, he's making really weird decisions with the puck. His underlying numbers are not there this season. It's, it's starting to become – I wouldn't say it's a massive problem yet. But it's definitely a trend. It's it's a bad trend. So I want to see him be a lot better going forward. Again, you know, not hating on him. I've loved and respected him for as long as he's been a penguin. But when you're playing bad, you're gonna hear it from me. I don't care who you are. He's been bad. And you know, do I think he's gonna bounce back? Yes. Like that, that's what great players do. He's a great player. I do think you're going to see a much better version of Chris Tang really, really soon. And then last but not least, Tristan Jari. That's another performance that really stuck out to me. Um, he made an interesting admission after the game where he said, you know, he's battling through an injury, but you know, that just, play, you know, ask the question, why are you playing? I understand you got it out for the team in the playoffs. I'll have all the respect for you in the world for doing that. But you know, this is November here for God's sake. Why are you playing in this situation? It's just a really, it's just really weird to me. I don't get it. Um, you know, they probably could have started to Smith back to back. With that, and I think he would have played a bit better. It's just, you know, Jari was off his game that entire night. He's been off his game for his last few starts. Has a, I believe it's an 875 save percentage, goals against average over three, um, negative goals above expected. Just hasn't been the same goaltender that we saw to start of the season. I'm not really sure who is going to start in this game on Tuesday. Would not be surprised if Sullivan, go, Sullivan goes back to DeSmith because DeSmith has played really well in his last couple of starts. But, you know, Jari, he also needs to get right at this team is going anywhere because when healthy, he is their number one goaltender. Um, a few of the goals they gave up, I, I didn't like that overtime goal that he gave up to Hoffman. I thought he should have been on his angle a little bit more. The fourth goal, I'm not really going to blame him that much. The Suzuki, the third one, that's just a really nice move. The, the first one, I feel like Tristan 
he sh- he saw that all the way. I think he should have made that save the second one. You know, fine, but you know, I think two of those five goals he should have had. Um, I think, especially in that overtime, when you need your goalie to make a save, and I know it's a two on one, so it's hard enough. But you know, the pass, I don't think it got over as fast as I, as I thought it was going to be, which is why I think Tristan should have made that save. But he also needs to wake up. He's not been good enough lately. Um, maybe he starts on Tuesday. Maybe he's feeling a little bit healthier. Maybe not. But I think for right now, you might see DeSmith get the bulk of the starts, um, unless it's a back-to-back and the other Penguins do have another back-to-back coming up. It's a, a full road back-to-back. So that's basically all my thoughts about the game against Montreal and just individual player performances that I like versus what I don't like. Coming up in the final segment where you're going to preview the game against the Toronto Maple Leafs and why an old friend is going to be making the start against the Penguins. His first start against the Penguins since the trade. Look for that coming up right after these messages. All right, I'm back in this episode of the Locked on Penguins podcast. I'm your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. Follow the show's Twitter at Eleanor Store Penguins. So, Maple Leaf signs, they look pretty similar overall. Michael Bunting, Austin Matthews, William Nylander, Alexander Kerfoot, John Tavares, Mitch Marner, uh, Pierre Engvall, Pontus Holmberg, Kelly Yarncrook, Dennis Mulligan, David Camp, and former Penguins at Aston Reese. Defensively, Morgan Riley with Jordy Ben, Mark Giordano with Justin Hall, Rasmus Sandin, and Timothy Lindgren. Um, just saw it today. Yeah, sorry about that. Jake Muzzin is going to be out, I believe, until at least February. So he is not going to be playing for the Maple Leafs. That is a big loss. And it looks like it will not be um, Eric Schalgren for this. It, it looks like it's going to be old friend Matt Murray, according to Sheldon Keith. He is in line to make the start against the Penguins on Tuesday. It will be his first start in Pittsburgh since he was traded to the Senators a couple of years ago. And this is going to go one of two ways, people. You want to hear him? Number one, makes a 40 to 50 save, either shut out or allows one goal and the Penguins lose two to one or get blown out. They lose four to one or something like that, but they still get a ton of shots and Matt Murray just stones them. Or he allows four goals on like 15 shots, something like that, and he gets pulled and then Engel has to come in. It, it's going to be one of those two things. I, I don't have a doubt in my mind. Um, <laughs> at this point. But, you know, I, I'm happy that I'm going to be there to see him play against the Penguins in his first start of PPG since the trade. I think he was treated really unfairly by a lot of fans um, during the Murray Flurry days. And, you know, without him, they do not win those two Stanley Cups. Absolutely not. You know, he was, you know, 925 in 2016. He was 937. These are save percentage wise. Um, in 2017, he stoned every team he played those back to back years. He was an absolute weapon for the penguins i would love for him to get back to that you know i think deep down he is still that goalie it's just him unlocking that part of his game again so you know he can just you know get back i don't know if it'll have or happen but you know part of me does think it's down there deep down i I really really do so i'm excited to watch him play against the penguins you know the penguins you know for to win this game apply the same blueprint to how you played against toronto um that you did on friday you know you limited chances to the Matthews line. Matthews didn't really do anything. You know, Marner didn't really do much. I know Nylander scored, but, you know, Tavares didn't really do much. The third period, obviously, that's a big blueprint to follow. They didn't give the Maple Leafs any time and space in that third, especially when they, when it was, you know, tied going in that period and then McGinn scores the go-ahead goal. Those final 17 to 18 minutes, the Leafs barely had any scoring chances against Casey and Smith. He did not really have to bail the Penguins out at all. They were also, I think, super aggressive in that third, they weren't turtling or anything. So they, they were trying to go and get that fourth goal. And eventually they did when Jake Gensel got the empty netter with about 10 to 15 seconds left in the third period. So that's one of my big keys for the game. Again, limiting the Maple Leafs offensive attack just because their top six is absolutely loaded. Defensively, they are hurting again with Jake Muzzin being out. I don't think Toronto is that deep of a team. I think their bottom six is kind of eh. Um, at this point, you know, the Penguins come into this team. I, I think as the healthier one, it stinks that Teddy Bluger is not going to be activated for this one. At this point, I don't even know when he's going to play. So I'm not even going to um, <clears throat> speculate or anything like that. Got to keep the Maple Leafs power play off the board. You know, their first power play unit, they'll roll out Marner, Morgan Riley, Matthews, William Nylander, John Tavares, a unit that, you know, can school any penalty killing pairing. So this will be a fun one. 
normally I would say you would see a lot of Leafs fans for this one, especially if it's on like a weekend day because a lot of Leafs fans will just come down from Toronto. It's not that far of a ride. I think Toronto from Pittsburgh is five, six hours. I'm pretty sure that, that people can do that. I think you wake up at 8 a.m. and get here by it's 2 o'clock or something like that, and then they can stay the night and then go home the next day. So, you know, for this one, though, I think there'll be some Leafs fans there, but it's not going to be as many as you normally see when this series is on for the weekend. So, again, you know, with, with Matt Murray and Ned, I know everyone's just going to say, go high glove, go high glove. You know, I think it's maybe a little bit of a problem with him, but I also would say almost to go high glove on any goalie. But I'm sure the opinions are going to try to do that, <clears throat> at least for him. Special teams, obviously big. I want to see the power play somehow do something. It's such a terrible unit right now. Don't know what's going on. I don't even know what they do in practice. Um, we love, I mean, I'm going to I'm gonna be moving here in a few weeks. I would love to go to a practice and just jot some notes down from what I'm seeing for you all for the show to be like, okay, this is what they're doing in practice. It's almost like it's no wonder that it's not working in a game. That is going to be one of the goals once I move up here is to go to practices as well as games and see, you know, if what I'm seeing in practice matches up to the games and like, okay, you know, it's just maybe their practice happens or something like that. So that's another big key for me. And, you know, again, they got to get off to a good start. They're going to be pissed off, I think, uh, coming off after that loss. You know, just try to keep the wave going. You've gotten points now in your last three games. You know, see what you can do in this one. And last but not least, got a small little winter classic scoop for you. I have it um, actually right here. Well, I'm going to make sure I have it. Yes. So, um, I have been told the Winter Classic jersey is going to be released on Black Friday. So, um, obviously not this Friday. Next Friday, right after Thanksgiving. I've also been told that the jersey is black and white. And the Penguin logo does not look like it's on it. It's a yellow P crest with a black outline, same color numbers. That is what I have been told what the jersey is going to entail. Um, and I've also heard that, yes, there is a little bit of blue in this jersey too. It's it's something that I think it's something that you it's a jersey that you probably will have never seen before. It's it's gonna be awesome. So that's what I've heard about when the jersey's gonna be released. What I've heard is is entailed on it. So look for the release in less than a couple of weeks at this point. Hopefully that scoop come to fruition as a couple of my other ones have as well. Again, I never claim to be an insider here, but you know when I get info I will obviously pass it along. To you guys, but that'll do it for this episode of the Lockdown Penguins Podcast. Really appreciate all of you listening to it. I'll be back with another episode after the game tomorrow. I'll try to do a full game recap episode for this once I get back to the Airbnb, which is literally a five minute walk. I'm not, not even a five minute walk, it's literally a one minute walk um, from the arena. So that will happen then. And then, if any of you all that listen to the game, uh, listen to the show, excuse me, are going to the game and want to meet up, send me a message on social media and stuff. Be glad to meet up with you all and talk some Penguins hockey. So um, can't wait to go to the game tomorrow. We'll see if the Penguins can get the win. And thank you all so much for listening. I'll talk with you all on Tuesday.